Hi everyone! If you're new here, I'm Alan with Earth Glow, and this channel is all about sharing the joy of candle making. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about my own wax blend that I formulated myself. And this video is at the request of many of you who have rightfully and curiously wondered why I made my own wax blend. When there are so many waxes available on the market, why did I decide to formulate my own blend? So this video is going to answer that question and it's going to talk about what the considerations were that went into the components of my wax blend, why I chose those components, what my goals were, and what the pros and cons are of my wax blend, as well as whether or not I would recommend it. Um, but anyways, if this is something that you're interested in, then and I hope that you're subscribed and I hope that you keep on watching. So I wanted to start this video out with just a little bit of backstory. I actually started making candles with pure beeswax and wood wicks. Um, I basically had trouble with both. Um, the beeswax would burn extremely hot and it had poor fragrance throw. And the wood wicks had trouble staying lit and um, the candles all in all um, were just not very good. And um, so at this time, this was about four, four and a half years ago, um, I wasn't actually selling my candles. Um, I was just making them for myself. And so I kept experimenting and I ended up adding some coconut oil to the beeswax, which pretty much just helps it to burn a little bit easier. And because beeswax is a really dense natural wax, it burns at a very high temperature and it can actually be dangerous. That's one of the reasons why it's not typically used in container candles. It's used more often in pillar candles. Um, but anyways, so yeah, I ended up making what um, became decent candles in my opinion. I was using like a 25% coconut oil, 75% beeswax with wooden wicks. And um, after I wanna say like six, eight months of this, I did start selling my candles and my customers were generally satisfied um, with the outcome. I really didn't get any complaints. I would occasionally get someone who had trouble keeping the wick lit. And this was largely due to the fact that my candles um, were just not conducive to working well with the single ply wood wicks that I was at the time using. In general, I wasn't satisfied with my candles and then there was the financial aspect. So beeswax, if any of you are familiar with it, it's like one of the most expensive um, waxes to use to make into candles. Um, it costs like four to five times the amount of soy wax and soy wax is also more expensive. Um, in general, but beeswax is just like insane. And when I actually looked at the numbers, um, it wasn't good. Basically, um, I was losing money and that is just not really where you wanna be as a business. So I tried making candles with 464 soy. I liked the idea of that wax because I'd heard a lot of people say that it had better fragrance throw than say 415 soy. And um, I also wanted to try uh, making vegan candles and technically beeswax isn't vegan. And so I bought my first bag of 464 probably four years ago. At first I laughed at it with its vegetables vegetable like consistency and it's low melt point. Um, it just seemed like kind of a cheap wax to me and it's not by any means, but coming from using pure beeswax, I looked at soy as kind of um, a cheap wax. It was a much more affordable option and it did allow me to make vegan candles and it also burned a lot easier than the pure um, or even 75% beeswax candle. It had a much better fragrance throw in general than what I was using before with the beeswax. So I continued using 464 for several years and I never looked back. I was just making and selling candles with 464 soy. The fundamental reason why I started making my own wax blend is when I decided that I wanted to have a more luxury marketed candle. I was not happy with the rough and pitted tops that 464 soy often unpredictably leaves. It is a feature of an all natural wax, yes, but I just don't think that it is acceptable for a luxury marketed candle. And I also didn't want to include 
any paraffin in my line, including food grade paraffin. And if any of you have purchased or looked at the wax blends on Makesy, for example, many of these are absolutely wonderful, but they do include a small amount of food grade paraffin. And that's also true of soy 10 and a lot of the soy wax blends that you will see. Um, if they're not parasoy, they do include typically a small amount of food grade paraffin. And for me personally, I did not want that to be in my candle line at all. I also didn't like how the 464 soy burned with the wood wicks. Um, the cold throw often is just not very good and it seemed like it was very unpredictable with how it performs with the wood wicks. Um, I didn't find that with CD wicks. Um, that's what I typically use in my uh, 464 tin candles that I still make and sell. But yeah, 464, pure 464 with the wood wicks, which is a no-go for me. My wax blend is a combination of 464 soy, beeswax, and coconut oil. It contains about 60% soy. And I wanted 464 soy to be the base of my wax blend because I was already very familiar working with it. As I mentioned, I've been making candles already for about three years with pure 464 soy. And so I was very familiar with how it performed and just with working with it. And I had sold thousands of candles um, that were made with just this wax. The next component in my wax blend is beeswax. And I really, really, really um, wanted to have beeswax in my luxury wax blend. It, it just, to me, was part of my history and part of my candle heritage, so to speak. And to me, it's like the definition of luxury. It's rich, it's creamy, and it gives that beautiful crackling effect um, with the wooden wicks. And it also increases the melt point, which is really helpful in the summertime for shipping. Um, 464 alone does have a really low melt point and coconut waxes, apricot cream, um, Though all those types of waxes do have generally a much lower melt point. Um, so adding beeswax definitely increases that melt point and it makes it much easier to ship candles in the summertime. Beeswax also emits a brighter flame that is of the same ray as sunlight. So candles that are made with beeswax do burn just a little bit brighter. And beeswax is also said to be a natural air purifier. Um, it's supposed to release negative ions into the air, which bind to toxins and and help to purify the air naturally. Beeswax also does burn longer. Um, soy candles do tend to burn longer than paraffin candles, but beeswax candles tend to burn even longer than soy candles. And the last ingredient in my wax blend is coconut oil. I do purchase the 76 degree melt point coconut oil from Soper's Choice. And I include coconut oil because it does help the beeswax to burn just a little bit easier. Um, my wax blend does contain about 20% beeswax and it, the coconut oil just kind of helps the other ingredients to blend together. And it does also increase the fragrance, um, the amount of fragrance that the wax blend can hold by a little bit. So its function is like paraffin, but I would argue that it's a healthier option because it is a renewable resource and it is not a petroleum um, or shale or coal byproduct like paraffin. So my goals for the wax blend is I wanted it to behave like beeswax, have smooth creamy finishes, maximum amount of crackling with the wood wicks, and I wanted a dense, creamy, opaque, luxe quality. I also wanted the fragrance throw of the soy wax, but with the increased fragrance load of the coconut wax. So basically, I wanted the best of all three waxes. And um, so that's what kind of was going in my mind when I was formulating the blend as far as the amounts of each. I was really paying attention to um, being familiar with all the individual components with just the amount of beeswax to make it behave like a beeswax candle, but just the right amount of soy wax to make it throw like a soy candle, but with just the right amount of coconut oil to not raise the melt point too much, but to um, basically allow it to hold a little bit more fragrance and to keep the beeswax from fracturing. So all those things kind of went into mind when I was formulating the amounts of each ingredient. And that was a process that took me five or six months um, before I came to what I use generally in all my candles. However, when I do make candles made with tins, I do use a separate recipe 
of these three ingredients for the tins because they do tend to burn a little bit uh, warmer because the tin material is more conductive of heat than the um, jars are. So I do use a little bit less beeswax, actually a lot less beeswax in those tins. Um, and I will post that recipe and a video of how I make my luxury tin candles as well if any of you are interested in that. So the pros of this blend is that it is a creamy, opaque, luxury, quality in terms of the consistency. It produces smooth top finishes after every burn. It has a higher melt point, which seems to contribute to a better fragrance throw than soy wax alone. It easily holds up to 10% fragrance. It could probably hold a little bit more than this because of the coconut oil, but I don't push it past 10%. It has great HT for a natural wax blend. It is easier to ship in the summer. It burns longer than soy alone. It produces a bright flame and it is brighter than any other candle candles that I have burned. It can be less expensive than some of Macy's wax blends and it does not contain any paraffin. It has a better cold throw with the wooden wicks than 464 alone does in my experience. And the last pro is that it is unique to um, my candle line. It's proprietary. So for the cons of the blend, um, the first con that I can think of is that it is a dense natural wax blend and so it will leave some wax, uh, a little bit of wax residue on the side of the jar even when you do burn it to a full melt point. It's gonna leave a little bit of residual wax on the side of the jar. So if that bothers you, then that would be reason to not use this blend. And the next con is that you have to blend three waxes together. You're blending beeswax as well as the coconut wax as well as the 464 soy. And so that can um, take some time to measure out all those components and blend them together. And you're also sourcing from three different suppliers. And so there's shipping charges involved in that. And it's just a little bit more of a pain to order from three different vendors. And it's also more expensive than soy wax alone. And soy wax does tend to be a more expensive wax. So um, it is going to be less expensive than buying a lot of the luxury marketed waxes like your Soy Bliss or like your um, Makesy wax blends, but it still is going to be more expensive than soy alone. And the last con is that it is more likely that an ingredient could be out of stock when there are three different suppliers involved and there's more ingredients involved. There's just more variables. In final conclusion of this video, do I recommend my wax blend? And the big answer to that question is yes and no. It depends 100% on your time, your investments, your business goals, your budget, your clientele, and the list goes on and on. Basically, it depends 100% on your circumstances. And I'm also always perfecting it. I really don't ever consider it a final product. With all that said, the recipe is available to you and I will link it above, but it is 100% at your own risk. And I, if you do choose to use it, expect you to do rigorous testing to make sure that it meets your safety standards and your business values. But anyways, that is all for today's video. And if you did enjoy this video, uh, don't forget to leave a comment below and don't forget to give it a thumbs up. But thank you so much for watching this video and happy candle making.